thank you very much. It's a pleasure sitting with Colin XP, Dominican artist, the two-time winner of the Bouillon Monarch Competition in Dominica, Colin XP, a registered nurse in Dominica. Just one year ago, in the height of COVID-19, I also visited Colin XP to find out what was going on in the life of an artist at the time in the midst of COVID-19 to find out what in fact she was doing. One year later, a lot has changed. In fact, Colin, yesterday, the Ministry of Health in Dominica reported zero cases of COVID-19 for Dominica, a major achievement for the country. And that announcement was made yesterday. By the way, before I begin, let's say happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you so much. What is planned for Mother's Day on Sunday? Um, well, of course, musical therapy with Colin XP will be having a grand virtual celebration. We will be celebrating all the mothers. So we are inviting all the mothers at home, abroad, wherever you are. You can join us on our virtual celebration, Colin XP Facebook page, YouTube page, and also the Digicel page. So that's your contribution yes. towards Mother's Day yeah. on, on Sunday. Definitely. And, and you're hoping that all mothers everywhere will be part of this um, feature. Of course, yes. And they can also look forward to winning gifts and prizes. And of course, I will have a little surprise get up for them. Right. So we want to congratulate you for that initiative. Thank you. And we hope that the mothers will enjoy that feature tomorrow. Thank you. Sunday. Colin XP, I said earlier that I came here last year, mm -hmm. just about a year ago, to find out how you were doing as an artist in Dominica. It's one year later. Mm -hmm. May, June of last year, April, May, June of last year. What was it like for the artist in Dominica mm -hmm. at the time? Well, at that time, um, as we all know, COVID was on a rise. And um, there was no way we could go out to have any live shows or events, you know? So everything was on a go slow, basically. And for those of us musicians who solely survived on music, you know, we had to now come up with a new way, a new plan, a new strategy to earn a living. So at that point, we were strategizing. <laughs> And you strategize and things happened for you. Yes. Tell us a little about your use of social media to entertain people here and abroad because thousands yes. were happy with what you were doing. Yes. Bring us up to date on whose idea it was and how that, that played out for you. Um, well, it came about when um, one Sunday, Connell and I, we just, we were bored, <laughs> you know. And so we decided, hey, we're here, you know, we cannot go out, but we're married, we live together, and we play together. So, Cornell said, um, well, let's just do a live, no man, and, you know, it's something for us to do. So we came up on this very porch right here, and we set up, and we just decided to play some music, and the resounding response that we got after, we, we decided we couldn't just have done one show and call it quits. And you, you all continued, we continued with the support of so many people. Oh yes, yes. And it, it grew bigger and bigger. Like every Sunday, it, we had a, a, a lot more viewers tuning in. Now, you were more fortunate than other artists. At the time, you were yes. able to do that, that feature. You were able to do that for, for your, your fans right. and for people here and abroad. Right. What about the other artists who did not have that opportunity? Right. What was life for him like at the time? May, June, mm -hmm. of course, April of 2020. Right. I mean, um, we have had some um, musician friends of ours, you know, who came about. And some of them decided to venture out into other things, you know, maybe construction, a little gardening here and there. And some who really didn't know what they could have done with themselves. It was really frustrating for them. You know, so they, they spoke to us and so on. And we ourselves, we, we decided to have certain shows where we could invite them in, you know. And even if it's a little stipend or something, we would give them, you know, just to help and to make a contribution because we know they struggle, you know. So we, we, we try to help them and to encourage them that COVID, we don't want it to be here forever. And I don't think it's going to be here forever. But in the meantime, 
work on your skills, work on your craft, develop your music if you're going to learn how to read, you know, write music, um, work on your instruments, whatever instruments you play, see how you can make it a little better. You know, we just give them some advice, some encouragement, and we invited them on our virtual platform to get some exposure and also to let their fans know that they are still, they are still here. I must say, as an observer, that this was a, a, a massive sort of uh, initiative by you yeah. and, of course, your husband and uh, many people around the world up to now yeah. are speaking about that initiative. Yes. The use of social media to engage with people all around Dominica and around the world. Right. What are other plans that you have for the rest of the year? Anything you've already thought of? Um, absolutely. Um, well, obviously, we're going to continue with the virtual shows, but I'm also looking forward to somehow opening out the shows to maybe a limited amount of um, viewers. You know, as you reported, as you said, um, the Ministry of Health reported zero active cases. So we could probably um, now start slowly going into more live performances. You know, so of course we'll continue to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. And, um, but we're looking forward to opening out our shows to um, a small live audience. Oh, and that is going to happen this year? Yes, hopefully. Later down in the year. In the, and that will happen right here? Right here in our yard. In your yard. Yes. Wow. Well, that is really impressive. Now, Colin, you have been an impressive and well-respected Dominican artist. Would you say COVID-19 and how you've used, used the, the period, do you think that has brought you to a whole new level in your musical career? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when we started, like, um, the first day we did the, the musical therapy, well, I shouldn't say musical therapy, it was a live. We didn't name it musical therapy yet. Um, I would have had maybe anywhere between 300 to 500 viewers, you know, and um, a lot of people didn't know who Colin XP was, you know, but as this show grew bigger and bigger, you know, more people would invite their friends, their co-workers, um, their family members, both in Dominica and overseas, you know, they would then be sharing the links to the lives and telling people, you need to see this person, please go and view, you will enjoy it, you know, so the fan base grew bigger and bigger. And even to persons who send me messages in my inbox, you know, and say, I was never a fan of Colin XP, even those who have known me before, you know, um, I was never a fan, but after viewing the show, you know, I really love and appreciate what you're doing. So I have gained new fans. And those who are already my fans, you know, they invited other people to come on board, you know, and be supportive of the initiative. So it has really grown my fan base. And a lot more people now know who Colin XP is. You've also been involved in humanitarian efforts in Dominica. Tell yes. us a little about uh, what you've been doing. Um, okay, so from... Last year when we started uh, musical therapy, we have been donating, we made some donations to single moms. We've made some donations to different schools. You know, we have given um, laptops and iPads to students who did not have at the time when the country was on lockdown, you know, and everybody was going to school virtually. You know, we have also partnered with Riverland Mass when we did Riverland Mass in Miami, for Miami Carnival, you know, we sold the t-shirts and um, the proceeds of the t-shirts went towards creating Colin XP COVID-19 kits and we gave to over a thousand students all around the island. Um, also, I have taken on the initiative um, to have some kids, you know, um, be their mentor, their advisor, their guide, sort of in one of the primary schools in Dominica because when I visited the school, the principal was really adamant, you know, she's like, we really need somebody that they look up to that can encourage them and boost them. And I must say, this has been a, a very wonderful adventure for me. You know, the kids are very responsive and I'm really happy I can make a positive impact in their life. Also, more recently, we have done um, over the Easter celebration we did a Hallelujah Praise concert 
And uh, we did it in collaboration with Father Branca John and the parish priest for Grand Bay, right? And we did it as a fundraiser to help raise money for the renovation of the St. Patrick's Church in Grand Bay. You know, so we helped raise over $21,000 for the church. And um, we have a lot more that we're going to do. Um, as of next week, I'm still going to be giving out. We have to go to a, um, a preschool in Coolibee Street. And so our give back, our donations um, have not stopped. And we're only looking forward to helping others in any way that we can. If you were given the role of a goodwill ambassador for Dominica, <laughs> Would you accept this? Is that something you see yourself doing for your country? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I feel like I'm kind of like playing a role already, already. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if it has to be official, um, yes, I would absolutely be willing to do that. But I would only do it if um, Cornell is recognized as one as well. Because, you know, it's not just, yes, Carlin XP is in the limelight but it's a team effort, you know, and he is just as much as involved or maybe even more involved than I am. Right, well, that's very, very interesting to yes. hear what you've said. Yes. Very interesting. We mentioned it briefly earlier on in terms of the future for Colin XP. Mm -hmm. What is that looking like? Wow. Um, I'm looking at a will tour. But a will tour? A will tour. <laughs> I mean, the, um, the, the calls from the outside um, producers and event organizers have already been coming in, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. But in the near future, which is coming up um, this month and May 30th, we can look forward to the Buyo Jazz Festival. Is that something new? Yes, it is, actually. Um, I'm doing it um, in collaboration with uh, Mikael Henderson. We are calling it the Nature Island Jazz Experience. So it would be two weeks. The Jazz in Me, which will be hosted by Mikael Henderson, will be on the 22nd uh, of May. And the Buyo Jazz Festival, which I am hosting, will be on the 30th of May. So the jazz lovers and the Buyo lovers and, you know, lovers of musical therapy and, and Mikael Henderson, they can look forward to... Um, the Nature Island Jazz Experience. That happens right here at well, your home? Yes. Is it going to be an annual event or that's just a one-off I'm hoping, event? I'm hoping that this is one of the many <laughs> annual events that Carly Next Day will be hosting. What is the message though coming from COVID-19 when one looks at what you have been able to achieve and mm -hmm. so on? Is there some important message you would like to send out there? Yeah, sure. Um, Whenever one door is closed, many more will open. It's up to you to open one door, you know, and see what you can find hiding behind the door, you know? Instead of just sitting back and say, oh, COVID-19 is here, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? And, you know, you, you, stay, you stay on the back burner waiting for something to happen. You know, I would just like to encourage people to... Try and make something positive out of something so negative. You know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So, like, I can take musical therapy and say I have done something positive out of a bad situation. You know, and um, I don't want persons to, yes, we're going to feel depressed, we're going to feel down, we are all humans. But we have to find a way to dust ourselves up, pick up ourselves, and see what we can do to help ourselves and by extension, make a positive change in somebody else. You are still young in your musical career. Yeah. What is the ultimate goal of Colin XP? Ah, ultimate goal? To be known worldwide and take Dominica's music globally. How far you think you are from this goal? Mm, as soon as COVID is done. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think COVID-19 has affected the Dominic the other Dominican artists? Um, in a bad way, you think? Kinda, yes and no. I mean, a lot of, of, of us artists, um, before COVID-19, we were sort of um, getting 
more recognition. You know, um, Buya Music had taken a, a, a turn for the better, where you know we had the likes of Marshall Montano and so on, um, being more interested in the Buya genre. You know, so there were more people looking at the Buya Music. So it was taking a, a little turn for the better. You know, but um, when the COVID came about, everything got shut down, and you know it took a back seat for now. Um, I wish that um, more artists would have been more creative and adventurous like I was. You know, not everybody has the resources, but it doesn't hurt to come and say, hey, Colleen, you have the platform, you have the tools, you know, can we, can you help us? You know, can you, there's nothing wrong in asking for help, nothing wrong in asking for assistance, you know, um, and I really wish that more of them would have jumped on this bandwagon, uh, become more virtual, put yourself out there, put your music out there, put Dominica out there, you know, and not just wait on somebody, maybe the government or um, the festivals committee or somebody to do something for you, but make something for yourself. There's a lot of talk in Dominica about artists mm -hmm. coming together. Mm -hmm. We've heard that for several years now. Oh, yes. Is that practical, Karen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can the artists mm -hmm. come together to form some group or what will that group do for the artists? I mean, um, it can be practical, but we have to be real, we have to be honest and say that um, I don't see it happening anytime soon. You know, um, I am a member of AMP, which is the, the music association in Dominica. I'm also a registered member of ECHO, you know, and um, these are registered and professional bodies, you know, that is there to help the artists and to, to take care of our rights and our needs, you know? So if we have these associations there for us, we should utilize them, you know, and make use of them instead of trying to form our own association. You know, that that's how we show the unity and the camaraderie among the artists. You know, we there's a, an association, there's a body that is there to represent us. Let's be part of it. Let's let them hear our needs. Let them hear what we can do to help the industry to grow instead of we have our own association and they have their own association. Interesting. We live in a small country, Kalin Dominica, small country, mm -hmm. resources are scarce. Sometimes resources are not diverted into the music industry right. in a way that we would like to see. Right. How do we move forward in this music industry in Dominica? Again, is the, the unity. You know, if we all come together as one and we go to the powers that be and say, hey, this is what we need to help the music industry um, move forward. You know, they will listen to us. But if we go as that one person or we have that one person and they will not take us as serious as they need to. You know, so it, I think it all comes down again to uniting, becoming one body and going to the powers that be and let them know that, hey, Music is just as um, important as the tourism industry. You know, it's a great marketing tool to have the music. And other islands have recognized that and they're using it. So it's time we look at our music industry and see how we can use it to market Dominica a little more. If you were given the opportunity to speak to the Minister for Culture, mm -hmm. what would you want to say to the Minister? Ah, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I'd want to say. <laughs> let's use the artist, let's use the music you know, um, to propel Dominica forward. Yes, the tourism industry is, is good as well, but see what happened when COVID came about. Nobody could travel, you know, so the tourism industry um, is shut down. But you could still utilize the music, right? Case in point, musical therapy, you could still have the music going out to the world. And even better so because it's a virtual world, there's no limit on the internet, you know, so... Um, I would like them to put a little more effort, a little more um, funding into the music industry and see how we can use the music and the artists as a marketing tool for Dominica. Earlier in this interview, we said that the Ministry of Health in Dominica reported mm -hmm. on Friday yes. that there were zero cases of COVID-19. Right. Any thoughts? Right. I'm sure you would be monitoring what is going on on the ground mm -hmm. as an artist mm -hmm. yourself. Any thoughts on that announcement? Absolutely. Um, I mean, they have reported zero cases, but um, we'll still be taking our um, 
COVID-19 protocol and measures. Um, I will still continue to wear my mask everywhere I go, <laughs> you know, because um, we don't want to let down our guards and then we go back, you know, um, into having more active cases. But um, I think it's a wonderful thing that we were able to have it under control. And so congratulations to the Ministry of Health. And let's just continue doing what we're doing to keep it at zero active cases. The cruise ships are returning to Dominica in the month of June. It was yes. stated that that would happen in early June. Yes. Can the musicians make a case for, let's say, a World Creole Music Festival in Dominica this year, October, November? Um, Do you think it's wise for that to happen? Um, not yet. Not yet. I still don't think we are out of the woods because... Although we may have zero active cases in Dominica, we still have to think of the rest of the world, you know? And um, I think I'm one of those who are not in favor of opening the tourism, the, the tourism um, sector right now. But, you know, um, it, is, it is going to happen. And so I will do what I have to do to protect my, myself and my family. And... Um, I don't think we can have a, a Creole festival right now, you know, even if the tourism, the tourist season is opening. Um, my reason for that is um, whenever you have a, a festival, if you have followed um, other islands, whenever they had a festival, you would see the COVID cases on a rise, you know, and even if we don't open the, the borders and so on to outsiders, there's no way we're going to control the people who are coming in from back door. And obviously, if we have a Creole festival, we are going to have people coming in via the back door um, entrances, you know? So maybe if we are to have a Creole festival, I would recommend it be virtually. Virtual. Yes. Sort of um, event. Yes. You've not performed at the World Creole Music Festival Not at, at all. Not at XP, no. Yeah, I, I thought of it a few weeks ago, and I was almost surprised and shocked <laughs> that Colin XP has not uh, performed at the World Creole Music Festival. Yes. But I'm very sure, based on everything, yes. I'm very sure that um, that is not going to be something we will, we will not see. Right. Well, I'm hopefully. I'm very sure that is in the making. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. That's in the making. <laughs> Colin, is there anything else that we did not speak about that you would like to highlight in this interview? Anything we did not, we did not mention and you would like to just speak yes. about it? Um, well, first of all, I would just like to say thank you, Curtis, again for having this interview with me. Um, I really appreciate it. One year ago, we had no idea what, <laughs> what would happen, you know, and here we are one year later. We have zero active COVID-19 cases. Um, a lot more people now know who Carlin XP is, a lot more people now know who Dominic, where Dominica is. And um, COVID-19 has done something positive for me. Um, we now have a Carlin XP online store, you know, um, Expelicious Clothing. We now have our own brand of Dominican water. You know, we call it the Buyo water. So we were able to make something very positive out of COVID-19. So I don't want to say thank you, but... <laughs> the fans so, love you a lot. I have yes. noticed that every artist has his fans, but the Colin XP fans, they love you yes. a lot. My Buyo Army is always, 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 always on point. <laughs> Talk about the... The, the, the show that you're going to be holding tomorrow on Mother's Day. Again. You yes. mentioned it earlier on. Yes. Talk about it again. Yes, so tomorrow we'll be having a grand um, virtual Mother's Day celebration. Um, we have a lot of gifts and I have a special guest artist for them tomorrow. I'm pretty sure they would enjoy it and they will be quite surprised. So I'm excited about that. So I'm encouraging everyone to tune in um, to my Facebook page and my YouTube page for our grand Mother's Day virtual celebration. Colin XP, as a reporter myself, I really want to say thank you to you. Thank you. For the massive contribution that you've made to Dominica. And uh, I'm sure one of these days you will be recognized for what you've done for Dominica, particularly during this COVID-19 period. You've done a lot of work, but particularly during this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank I'm you. very sure you will get the, the reward and the recognition 
that you deserve in Dominica. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Karen. It's always a pleasure speaking yes. to an artist like you. Absolutely. All the best going forward. Thank you.